Ever heard of a movie so famously terrible? It's called the worst film ever made. Well, let me introduce you to Plan 9 from Outer Space. It came out in 1957 and has a big fan base, but not because it's good. Imagine this aliens, zombies, and flying saucers all mixed up in a story that's so bad, it's kind of funny. But here's the crazy part, making the movie was even more chaotic. They had no money, so they used shower curtains for spaceship walls. And when an actor died during filming, the director got creative to replace him. But wait, there's more. Keep an eye out for Ed Wood, the guy who thought up this mess. He loved making movies, even though he wasn't very good at it. That just adds to the charm of the whole thing. So, are you ready for a ride filled with laughs, surprises, and maybe a little bit of sadness? Stick around because there are lots of funny, shocking, and even sad stories to uncover. Now, do you have a special memory or experience with this movie? Share your stories below. Plan 9 from Outer Space, despite being a cult classic, divides people's opinions. Some enjoy its unintentional humor and flaws, while others think it's one of the worst movies ever. The movie looks cheap, with unconvincing sets and bad special effects. The dialogue is cheesy and often makes people laugh unintentionally. The movie tries to tell a story like the day the earth stood still about aliens warning humans about advanced weapons, but it doesn't work well. The plot is confusing, involving bringing back the dead and controlling them with old technology. The black and white look doesn't help and the acting feels amateurish. Despite its many problems, the movie has a certain charm for some. Its unintentional humor and boldness in the face of criticism have made it a cult favorite. While it's not a great movie, it's interesting to study because of its cultural importance. In short, Plan 9 from Outer Space is a strange movie that people either love or hate. Its strange charm and ability to entertain, even with its flaws, show the power of movies. In the early years of his fame, Bela Lugosi got stuck in spooky movie roles. But it seems that his career might have been messed up on purpose, not just because he was getting typecast. Lugosi did really well in Son of Frankenstein, but another actor who had a lot of influence with Universal Studios bosses held him back. This actor's rivalry with Lugosi had a big effect on his career. Now, there's a plan to make a new version of the movie in 2023 by Shalom Jolt from Scotty Jolt Productions. They want to give a fresh take on the classic story, maybe showing it to a new group of people. Also, Paul Marco, the guy who played Kelton the cop, named his character after the street where his agent lived. Little details like this make characters more interesting for the audience. To sum it up, the story of Plan 9 from Outer Space is not just about the movie itself. It's also about what happened behind the scenes that shaped how it was made and how it's remembered in the world of sci-fi movies. In the world of movies, there are some cool stories about how they're made. One story is about a movie called Plan 9 from Outer Space. In this movie, they needed police cars and uniforms. So, Tor Johnson's son, Carl Johnson, who was a cop, helped them get these things. Even though Carl wasn't credited in the movie, his part made the police scenes more real. One of the actors in the movie, Bela Lugosi, is really famous. After he died, he got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for all the good stuff he did in movies. Even though he wasn't in most of Plan 9 from Outer Space, people still remember him and his work in Hollywood. The guy who came up with the idea for the movie was Edward D. Wood Jr. He wrote a book called Hollywood Rat Race that tells about his time making movies. It shows how hard it can be to make it in Hollywood. So, Plan 9 from Outer Space is a reminder of how crazy the movie business can be. Lyle Talbot, a notable actor, holds a unique distinction in his career. He starred in leading roles in different National Road Company tours of Neil Simon's play, The Odd Couple, during the 1960s. Talbot portrayed both Felix Unger and Oscar Madison, originally played by Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau, respectively. Bela Lugosi, another prominent figure, had a distinctive style in his film appearances. He typically wore a tuxedo in almost every film, with exceptions in roles where he portrayed beasts or monsters, such as in Island of Lost Souls, Son of Frankenstein, and Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman. Furthermore, Lugosi's involvement with Dracula's daughter is notable. Despite being contracted to appear in the film at a salary of $4,000, Lugosi's character did not feature prominently in the final script due to rejection by Universal. However, he was compensated more for not appearing in the film than he earned for starring in the original Dracula film. These anecdotes shed light on the diverse experiences of actors like Lyle Talbot and Bela Lugosi, adding depth to their careers beyond their roles in Plan 9 from Outer Space. In a scene from Mad Max, the protagonist dons a Halloween mask resembling Tor Johnson. 
a framed portrait of himself commissioned in the 1930s hung in Bela Lugosi's home until his passing, now owned by Metallica's lead guitarist Kirk Hammett. Lugosi's portrayal in Todd Browning's Dracula garnered him more fan mail from females than even Clark Gable. Criswell, dissatisfied with Edward D. Wood Jr.'s narration, took charge and wrote all the narration himself. He found Wood's version dull. Talbot, known for his role as General Roberts and Duncan, though uncredited, played significant DC Comics characters in the Batman and Robin serial film of 1949. Talbot portrayed Commissioner James Gordon, while Duncan portrayed Dick Grayson, also known as Robin the Boy Wonder. Lugosi, who famously played Dracula, never wore fangs in the role, a trait shared with Langella in a later adaptation. In 1953, George Zuko, a struggling actor, sought work from Edward D. Wood Jr., who had nothing available at the time. Despite Zuko's pleas, Wood couldn't offer him a role. Edward D. Wood Jr. enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps in May of 1943. Despite enduring combat and injuries, he served with distinction, earning accolades such as the Silver and Bronze Stars, two Purple Hearts, and a Sharpshooter's Medal. Bela Lugosi Jr., the son of Bela Lugosi, practices law in Los Angeles Cat. Three of Edward D. Wood Jr.'s films have been featured on Mystery Science Theater 3000 Bride of the Monster, The Violent Years, and The Sinister Urge. The show's producers considered including Plan 9 from Outer Space, but found it too dialogue heavy for their format. However, Michael J. Nelson, a regular on the show, later provided audio commentary for a DVD release. Wood's continued interest led to the republishing of two of his steamy adult paperbacks, Death of a Transvestite and Killer in Drag. Bela Lugosi, famous for his role as Dracula, was relatively unknown in Hungary, his native country, due to strict communist censorship. It was only through home video and the internet that Hungarians saw his performances, as few American genre films reached the country until then. Only a couple of Lugosi's works have been dubbed into Hungarian, and DVD releases have been out of print since the early 2000s. In 1957, a unique cinematic creation emerged, blending the talents of Bela Lugosi and curious choices in set design. Lugosi, known for his roles, notably in White Zombie, held a particular fondness for the film. Notably, he even stepped into the director's role for parts of it, as revealed by his son, Bela Lugosi Jr. Before this, in 1929, Lugosi's personal life garnered attention. His brief marriage to Beatrice Weeks, a wealthy San Francisco widow, lasted only three days, and the ensuing divorce made headlines, naming Clara Bow as the other woman. This media sensation thrust Lugosi into national notoriety. Turning to the movie itself, the inner workings of Eros' flying saucer reveal curious choices and props. The set featured scientific equipment, including a zapping Tesla coil, and a flashing barricade light commonly used in road construction work, often mounted on top of a sawhorse. The movie's unconventional blend of Lugosi's personal connection and peculiar set design choices made it stand out in the cinematic landscape of its time. The fusion of Lugosi's directorial involvement and the odd selection of props created a film that remains a distinct piece in the history of cinema.